morning. I want to share a few words this morning. And after that, I'm going to play a clip that I hope will serve as encouragement and strengthen you. You see, it's very easy to praise God when we have what we think balance in our lives. It is only when we are tested with affliction that is truly revealed where our hope and our hearts lie. And maybe this morning, as I often do, I'm talking to myself. For some of us woke up this morning and it's summer, and some of us woke up this morning and it's winter. We go through seasons all our lives, from birth to death. But what remains steadfast, unmovable, is the Word of God. And every command that God has given us in love to remain on that path that sometimes seems so narrow is because he loves us because he is a father many will fall off that road many will walk away as with every test there is a result Fear tempts us to be paralyzed. And when we are overcome by such, the weapons of the enemy prospers. Would you have fear in your circumstances if you could know the outcome? No, you wouldn't. Because the fear would come. You would know the outcome. You wouldn't be fearful. It might be just a moment. Guess what? We know the outcome. For the outcome is revealed in the Word. As with every command of God, we choose our response. We choose our response. We choose. Jesus said, I put before you life and death. Choose wisely. God said it's not his will for man to perish. It's not his will. But many will. And no man will be without excuse. How does fear and anxiety and the despair that some might feel this morning fit into this? You know how many times fear not appears in the Bible? 365 times. The Lord says to us, fear not. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Because the enemy seeks a result when fear hits us. We all know Psalm 121. But I want to amplify it this morning. Because there's one little word that jumps out at me. As children, we knew this very well. Maybe we should seek the old paths. And understand why. Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven 
and earth. Did you note? Not I lift up my eyes. It says I will lift up my eyes to the mountain. Because I need help. Where does my help come from? You see fear triggers despair or prayer. So choose wisely. Ask yourself this morning, what is bigger? Stop staring at the problem. Get down and look higher. Yes, Christians will face moments of helplessness and powerlessness, but never hopeless. We have hope. We know the outcome. So listen to what I'm going to share with you now. And I hope this strengthens you. But before we do that, let's bow our hearts in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, direct, sanctify, and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments that under your protection, now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's 2.30 in the morning and you cannot sleep. You roll from one side to the other. You pound your pillow. Nothing helps. Everyone else sleeps, but not you. And so it's 2.30 in the morning, it becomes 3.30, and you still haven't slept. And anxiety begins to have its way with you. Another hour passes. You cover your head with a pillow. You feel like crying. What a mess. What does all this anxiety mean? All this insecurity, all this trepidation all this worry, all this restlessness, what does it mean? Well, it means simply this. You are a human being. You're not stupid. You're not emotionally underdeveloped. You're not immature. Your parents didn't fail you. It doesn't mean you failed them. And this is important. It does not mean you're not a Christian. Christians battle anxiety. Jesus did. In the Garden of Gethsemane on the night before his crucifixion, he prayed for the cup of suffering to be taken away from him. And he prayed with such ferocity that, that the capillaries burst and, and rivulets of, of crimson rolled down his face. Jesus battled anxiety. He faced fears. But he fought through his fears and surrendered them to God and fulfilled his mission. And anxiety did not win. And such is God's plan for you. Anxiety comes with life, but it doesn't have to dominate your life. God's plan for you is not a life that is drenched in anxiety. It is his will that you and I learn to live a life that is characterized by calm and not chaos, by peace and not panic. You ever felt nearly swamped in your life? Like, I'm still showing up, but barely. I'm making it and I'm smiling, but nobody knows what's really behind this smile. The things I think about, some days I just want to run away from it all. I want to suggest something to you today about the storms of anxiety in your life and the waves and the winds that are blowing in your life. Because, man, the winds will blow. They will blow. Absolutely. And the waves will break and they will crash. No doubt about it. There are some things that you're afraid of that make no sense from heaven's perspective. There are some things that are causing you to shut down, they are paralyzing you, that are senseless. 
when you put it in the context of who God is in you and what you mean to him. And he says, I want you to train your, your heart to be anxious for nothing. If you're following after God's purpose, you got no reason to ever be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. How, how can, some, can somebody really live a life in which they're anxious for nothing? Do not let yourself be caught in a state of perpetual anxiety. That's what he's saying. It's impossible to lead a life free of anxiety, but we can discover a life that is void of perpetual anxiety. Anxiety comes with life, but it does not have to dominate our lives. You see, anxiety, depression, and unhappiness, they all come from a sense of powerlessness. They all come from a sense of powerlessness. So when you're powerless, you feel anxious. When you're powerless, you feel depressed. When you're powerless, you feel unhappy. So the, the idea that, that you're powerless over your debts, powerless over the sentence, powerless over the battle, that somehow it's up to you to try to make it happen, that will bring you sadness. It will bring you anxiety. It will bring you, so we only get anxious about something because we're not certain about what the outcome is going to be. Why would you be anxious about something you're sure about? You know, when you're rooting for your favorite team, when it's live and it's happening and, they're, and the game is really close and it's down to the last minute, you get anxious about it. It's just an example that, that just is, shows how our emotions operate. You understand the anxiety when, you, when, when it's close and when it's on the edge because you're not sure. But let me ask you something. If you already know and if you're watching you would have no anxiety. Why? Because you already know the outcome, right? See, you have no fear and no anxiety when you know the outcome. Well, the outcome of whatever your need is, is my God shall supply it. So when you know the outcome, anxiety leaves you. There's a pathway out of the valley of fret, and God has used the apostle Paul to sketch the map. In this passage from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. A person would be hard pressed to find a passage more practical and applicable to our day and age. Wouldn't you agree? So what can we do? Paul lists here four helpful ideas for winning the war on worry. And if you want to move from chaos into calm, consider what Paul says. First, celebrate celebrate God's goodness. Rejoice in the Lord always, the apostle writes, with chains dangling from that Roman jail cell. Rejoice in the Lord always, he writes, with no penny in his pocket. And perhaps the sound of the footsteps of the executioner in the hallway. Rejoice in the Lord always, he writes, beneath the shadow of Nero and the threat to the church. He says, now just rejoice in the Lord always. His point is, don't meditate on the mess. The more you stare at the problem, the bigger it gets. The more you stare at the problem, the bigger it gets. So when you have a problem, lift up your eyes and rejoice in the Lord. The minute the anxiety comes, rather than giving in to the anxiety, you lift up your eyes and you rejoice in the Lord. This was the counsel of the psalmist. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Do you see the intentionality in those words? I will lift up my eyes. This was the decision that the psalmist made. The Apostle Peter is a testimony to this. You remember how 
when the storm struck the Sea of Galilee, he knew what 10-foot waves could do to a fishing boat. And Peter cried out, Lord, if it's really you, then command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter left the boat and walked on the water to Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind and the waves, he became afraid. And he began to what? Sink. As long as he kept his eyes on Christ, he was able to do the impossible. But when he saw the wind and the waves, when he turned his gaze away from Christ, he began to sink. If today you feel like you're sinking, or the next time you feel like you're sinking, lift up your eyes, set your gaze on Christ, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in his sovereignty. Is God greater than your problem? Has God ever faced this problem before? Does God have solutions you've not thought of? Has God got you through these types of things before? Does God have a good track record? Is God strong? Is God sovereign? Is God still on the throne? Is he overall? See how you lift that up? You're rejoicing in the Lord. You're lifting your mind away from the problems and you're setting your mind on the one who can solve it. Do not meditate on the Mess. So you rejoice. That's what it means to rejoice in the Lord. Oh, I've got a great God. I've got a wonderful Father. I rejoice in the Lord. And then the apostle says, having done that, you'll be ready to ask God for help. You've calmed yourself down. Now you ask God for help. Let your requests be made known to God. You see, fear triggers either despair or prayer, so choose wisely. God said, call on me in the day of trouble. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. The path to peace is always paved with prayer. That's why the devil doesn't want you to pray. The path to peace is always paved with prayer. The enemy, Satan, would love to shut down your ability to pray in faith. When you pray and you take a promise of God and you declare it over your life in whatever area, okay, the Bible says to believe you have received it. Worry does not believe that. Anxiety does not believe that. The cares of this world do not believe that. And the enemy will attack anything that you stand in faith for. And he would love, even if in your everyday life, for you to start worrying about things that you never worried about before. When you offer a request to God, do you tell God, now God, I'm just gonna stay around till you get it fixed. If you need my advice, I'm gonna be putting you on the clock. I'm gonna check in with you. No, you leave your concern with your heavenly Father. And consequently, where that anxiety has gone, you can now place gratitude. Gratitude. Look what the apostle says. He says, In everything by prayer and supplication, with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Anxiety and gratitude cannot share the same heart. Test me on that. Try it sometime. The next time you're anxious, begin to make a list of things for which you're grateful. Because anxiety and gratitude refuse to share the same heart. So you leave your concerns with him. You fill your heart with gratitude. And then lastly, meditate on good things. Don't let anxious negative thoughts take over your mind. You cannot control your circumstances, but you can control how you think about them. Peace comes from a stream of thinking, from a stream of thinking, because you could be a Christian be born again and on your way to heaven, but have no peace. Why? Because of what you're thinking, because of what you're meditating on, because of what you're dwelling on, what you're focusing on, what's going through your ear, you know, in between your ears, what's going on in your head in between your ears. Listen, this is why so many Christians fail is because they're trying to obtain and struggling for a victory that Jesus has already given. You see, if, for example, if you think about one of the things he promised he would do for you is it says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. If your mind 
is constantly on the fact that God will supply, you will have peace. So you could have all the money you need and not have peace. But you could you could have an empty bank account and have peace because you believe the promise that he will supply. You see, the peace doesn't come from the money in your account. The peace comes from your thought and your mind focused on what God said he would do and your confidence that he will do it because he's done everything else that he said he would do. Some years ago, I wrote this in a journal. I read it quite often. Today, I will live today. Yesterday has passed. Tomorrow is not yet. I'm left with today. So today I will live today. Relive yesterday? No. I will learn from it. I will seek mercy for it. I will take joy in it. But I won't live in it. The sun has set on yesterday. The sun has yet to rise on tomorrow. Worry about the future? To what gain? It deserves a glance and nothing more. I can't change tomorrow until tomorrow. Today I will live today. I will face today's challenges with today's strength. I will dance today's waltz with today's music. I will celebrate today's opportunities with today's hope. Today. May I laugh, listen, learn, and love. And if tomorrow comes, may I do it again. The next time that anxiety awakens you at 2.30 in the morning. Would you believe what I'm suggesting to you? And that is, it is not God's will that you lead a life of perpetual anxiety. That your Heavenly Father will help you. He will help you pull out the roots of your anxiety. He will help you deal with the fears that face you. 